This is what James Webb saw at the edge of the universe. Humans have always had a crazy curiosity, literally about everything. We are inspired and capable of tremendous things by our curiosity we explore because we are naturally intrigued. We are always curious to learn more about the world we live in and about our true selves. Columbus arrived in America in this manner, also Neil Armstrong was able to set foot on the moon, that is also how the James Webb Space Telescope, the most amazing space telescope ever created, was conceived, designed, and ultimately launched. We constructed it out of a desire to understand the past. We want to know what will come after us, after all. Also, we are alive on this seemingly regular planet named Earth because we are incredibly fascinated about what is happening here and now, and not anywhere else, and it will turn into a crucial component of humanity's jigsaw. Is it really that basic, though? What traits does it possess? What has it so far learned? What can we anticipate from it then? Discover the responses to these and other questions by watching this film with me. I guarantee that you'll be astounded. The James Webb Space Telescope has been the subject of previous videos on this channel. And there's a good explanation for it. When Webb was initially planned and envisioned in the 1990s, its estimated cost was around a billion dollars. Isn't this a substantial sum of money? But in reality, it is nothing in comparison to the overall expense. Let me explain. The launch of the James Webb spacecraft was planned for 2007. It's true that constructing a telescope from the ground up is not easy, and James Webb's construction suffered from a number of delays and setbacks. But, it didn't launch until December 2021, which was 13 years later than planned. Now that it is operating, it is revolving around a location in space known as the Sun-Earth System's L2 Lagrangian Point. This enormous 6,500 kilograms monster had to spend several months unpacking, testing certain components, and making sure everything was in working condition before it could start operating. James Webb is operating better than expected despite certain issues NASA faced along the road. It is without a doubt a success for NASA and the entire planet. Most people have at least heard of the JWST and its amazing power. But what is it genuinely capable of? James Webb has a solar screen that is about the size of a tennis court at 14x21m to keep the instrument's critical components cool. Moreover, its light capturing mirror has a six times greater surface area than Hubble's primary mirror. The mirror is essential to the operation of a telescope. Moreover, the telescope can gather more light the wider the mirror is. Technically speaking, a bigger mirror enables the telescope to gather more photons from further away, producing stunning and precise images. James Webb had a large number of cameras and cutting-edge scientific equipment to improve its performance in the infrared spectrum of light. In essence, James Webb has a different perspective on the cosmos than we do. With its distinctive equipment, it can investigate the universe in more detail and look for strange, surprising, and possibly never-before-seen phenomena. There were several reasons why scientists wanted Webb to have infrared light sensitivity. For instance, we know from physics that light from the farthest things has been stretched by the expansion of the universe to the point where no matter what they were to begin with, they are all at least infrared light now. Thus, an infrared telescope is the sole tool that can be used to view these light sources. Yet, this is not the sole benefit of using infrared light. Another is that the optical portion of the light spectrum is more strongly absorbed by cosmic clouds than the long wavelength portion. Most of what lies behind them would be invisible to us if we were to gaze through optical veils of gas and dust. This is because clouds can impede optical light the infrared portion can still freely pass through them. We can therefore discover what is hidden behind these enormous clouds if we can create an apparatus that can detect infrared light. In general, infrared is more effective in piercing clouds and other obstructions. This is what James Webb is genuinely capable of. 
Start with the galaxy that we live in. The cosmic cliffs are the first thing that will be discussed. The fringe of the neighboring, young star-forming area NGC 3324 in the Carina Nebula may be seen in this scene of mountains and valleys, which is dotted with sparkling stars. This image is extraordinary because it makes star birth visible in previously hidden regions for the first time. In this image, the highest peaks are around 7 light years tall. Intense ultraviolet radiation and stellar winds from extremely large, hot, young stars at the Bubble Center have carved out the cavernous region of the nebula. Hubble already captured this image, but Webb makes individual stars and developing stellar nurseries apparent that are completely obscured in visible light images. Let's now take a brief closer look at NGC 3132, also referred to as the Southern Ring Nebula. In reality, this star is a blazing, dense white dwarf. The star repeatedly released mass as it changed into a white dwarf, contracted, heated up, and then pulsated as though on repeat. The bluer star to the right helps agitate the debris that was ejected. The disk that surrounds the stars is swaying, sending off spirals of gas and dust that last for a very long time. Mid-infrared light, the majority of which cannot be seen from the ground with a typical telescope, was used by Webb to capture this sight. JWST's near-infrared camera, NIRCAM, captured the image on the left, and the one on the right was captured once again by once more. Contrast this with Hubble's image and pause to enjoy the growing level of detail Webb is able to provide. Now, are you prepared? We are about to depart from our galaxy. Spend a minute gazing into the thousands of young stars in the Tarantula Nebula, which is 161,000 light years away from Earth. Many background galaxies and information about the nebula's structure and composition are revealed by the James Webb Space Telescope. The Tarantula Nebula, a stellar nursery known as 30 Doradus, is so named because of its protracted, dusty filaments. It is the largest and brightest star-forming zone close to our own galaxy and contains the hottest, most massive stars known. It is situated in the Large Magellanic Cloud Galaxy. The Tarantula Nebula is seen significantly differently when Webb concentrates on the region surrounding the main star cluster and the longer wavelengths of light acquired by its mid-infrared sensor. The young, blazing stars of the cluster lose some of their brightness in this light, and luminous gas and dust emerge. The dust clouds, seen in blue and purple, have surfaces that are illuminated by a lot of hydrocarbons. Why do scientists find this nebula interesting? The Tarantula Nebula is rapidly creating new stars, unlike the Milky Way. Even though it is close to us, it resembles the enormous star-forming areas from the early cosmos, when star formation was at its pinnacle and the universe was said to be at cosmic noon. We can easily examine the tarantula in depth because it is nearby, which will help us understand more about the early cosmos. So, if you like this video, why not subscribe to it and click the bell to receive notifications. Hold your breath, though, because I'm about to show you something amazing. A small fraction of the huge universe, this stunning image is about the size of a grain of sand held out at arm's length. Even though it is really small, if you look closely, you can practically see a number of galaxies. And if this is just a single grain of sand, consider how many galaxies, stars, planets, and Earths there are in the universe. If you consider it for, for a brief moment, it is amazing. This galaxy clusters total mass functions as a gravitational lens to magnify more distant galaxies, including some that were first observed when the universe was only a few billion years old. This image was captured by Webb's near-infrared camera and is referred to as Webb's first deep field. It is actually a composite image produced from photographs taken at various wavelengths over the course of 12.5 hours, hitting depths at infrared wavelengths beyond the farthest areas that the Hubble Space Telescope could reach in weeks. The galaxy cluster SMAX 0723 may be seen in this image as it would have appeared 4.6 billion years ago, along with a large number of other galaxies in front of and behind the cluster. It took billions of years for the light from these galaxies to reach us. 
one of our most distant depictions of the universe is this one. In essence, it is viewing a snapshot of the universe at its infancy. The wonder of astronomy is that it allows us to view the past from the present. The universe's expansion has widened this distant light to the infrared wavelengths that Webb was built to monitor. But why do this field's arches exist? Like a magnifying glass bends and warps images, so too does a galaxy cluster's strong gravitational field distort light beams from farther away galaxies that are behind it. These kinds of pictures give me the chills. James Webb will help us understand both an old galaxy like our own and the young galaxies that formed immediately after the Big Bang when the cosmos contained only hydrogen, helium, and lithium, among other things. It will also be looking for indications of life on exoplanets. Incredible new discoveries are undoubtedly on the horizon. Webb will take care of the rest. We just need to wait. All right, everyone here is where the video ends. Thank you for viewing. How do you feel about James Webb? Tell us in the comments section below. Be sure to follow the channel and perhaps enable notifications and see you again soon.